My name is Karen Manirajo and I was the researcher for the Ethiopia 100 Years of Beauty video. It was really difficult to do research for this video. I think if you're watching the news, you're seeing stories of poverty and famine still. And if you're watching music and through pop culture, then the archetype of beauty is straight hair and usually fair skin, which isn't really representative of all of the range of Ethiopians. Ethiopia is a good example for the first East African video in this series. In history, it was the first country to be able to fight against colonial powers. So I wanted to choose this braided style to represent Empress Taitu Bitu. She was one of the political strategists to craft the military strategy in the Battle of Badwa, one of the fights for independence in Ethiopia. She was a really admired woman, one of the founders of the capital of Addis. She was a really wonderful person to start this series off of. It takes a long time to do braids, so it could take two to three hours, but for other styles, it could take longer. For the 1920s, I wanted to show the style of Emperor Menelik's wife, Menenaspa, and to show how this was another woman who was very influential in politics. Her role in politics wasn't talked about as much just because she wasn't outspoken, but I think there is a role to play in terms of how she was a critical voice and advisor to her husband. So for the 30s, we chose a look that was actually featured in a postcard it was taken by an unknown Italian soldier. It features a woman with kind of wavy, curly hair on a motorcycle. This photo was eventually given to the British later as a Christmas card to show this hypersexualized version of the African woman. So while many women had this particular style at the time, the way it was represented in history doesn't necessarily match a story of an Ethiopian woman. So for the 40s, we wanted to just show another Afro-style look coming in, but this time it was after an Italian occupation and Ethiopia starting to have a different role than the 30s. While it was featured in the 20s and we showed a different look in the 30s, the Afro was still really common in Ethiopia. So for the 50s, we chose a look that was inspired by Asli Keshwarku. She was a trailblazer in terms of female musicians and very popular between the 50s and 60s. So for the 50s, this was the first time where makeup was really coming into looks of women. And this is why you see the bold lipstick and darker eyebrows that came into the scene. For the 60s, we wanted to choose a look that was inspired by Askatesh Sefa. She was a pilot that was later recognized by the Emperor Selassie, who's a really important figure in Ethiopian politics. In this picture, she has the curl and the puffed look of the hair, and it could be said that this was an effect of Western influence coming into the capital, but with her own flair. For the 70s, we chose a look that was inspired by the role of Ethiopian Airlines and the women that were part of the crew. So for the 70s, we decided to choose a look that was featuring the bangs and more coiffed look that was coming into the scene in the 70s. So for the 80s, we decided to go with a look that was really fun. The way that Ethiopia was portrayed in the 80s in terms of this major famine that was happening in the country is still playing out today. And that's not accurate. And this is why we wanted to show a look that was showing people are experiencing life in other ways. In the 90s, we decided to show a look that was inspired by Anna Gatene. She was an international model who came into the scene with her first Sports Illustrated cover. And this was also around the time when Ethiopian women were being included in hip hop culture. So for the 2000s, we decided to play off of two looks. One was from Miss Universe 2006, who was hailing from Ethiopia. And the other was from the famous Leah Kebede. She was the first supermodel coming from Ethiopia. And this was the first time where straight hair and the light makeup look of the 2000s was really coming into play and it's still associated with the look of Ethiopian women. Bringing it back now to 2010s and to today. This look of bone straight hair and maybe soft curls, the Kardashian look. So you see with Drake's hook on Kendrick Lamar's Poetic Justice talking about the East African girl is now the, the stereotype when we think about Ethiopian women. It's also an example of how Ethiopia over the decades has globalized. While there may be a diversity of looks in Ethiopia today, this is how we think about Ethiopian women. This isn't the end to African beauty. This is just the first of many ways to talk about the diversity on the continent. And so I'm really excited to see the future videos that we host for future African countries. Mm -hmm.